Hi, I'm Andy Burrows for Tides TV, and I'm here with Knud Jensen, who's professor in the Department of Chemistry at the University of Copenhagen. Thank you very much for joining today. Thank you for having me. Um, so first up, um, you're obviously an academic, work in academia. How do you see um, academia and industry working better together? Okay. So I, first of all, I think it can be very, very rewarding to work with, with industry, um, but it requires quite some effort and uh, dedication because you need to find this um, sweet spot where um, academia can benefit for, from it and industry can benefit from it. Uh, and it's, it requires a lot of communication, a lot of talking and um, finding out where we can do things together in a good manner. Um, it also requires several attempts. Sometimes mm -hmm. it will work, sometimes it will not work. Uh, so it's a learning experience and it's also a question of a long-term trust. Eventually you will find some partners that you can, can work with, uh, but, but really it requires an understanding from an academic point of view that you understand how industry works and how the different players in industry uh, work. It's different whether it's a small biotech uh, compared to a big pharma. Mm. Um, but uh, industry also needs to understand how things look from my side uh, that I'm, um, I have to follow, univers you know, follow university regulations. Uh, there are things I cannot do easily or I have to sign contracts. But once you have a good understanding, it can be very, very rewarding. Mm -hmm. And I like to emphasize to my students that there's a lot of really strong research going on into industry and that industry can uh, do science at a very high level um, and that it can be a model for good science. So right. it's also very educational for students to hear about this. And I guess more broadly, what um, other kind of collaborations <coughs> or partnerships do you see as especially important? So I'm engaged in a number of different collaborations with Big Pharma, with uh, biotechs, but also large academic uh, constellations. So, so one trend of obviously is that there is a big funding to make uh, large constellations where you have complex interactions that start to be a little bit more like uh, in a company with clear deliverables and contracts hmm. uh, and that can be beneficial. It can also be very challenging for academic groups to work with. Um, personally, I find it very rewarding to work with um, small and medium-sized biotech companies. Yeah. It's a very dynamic environment. Um, they're open to input of different kinds. Um, sometimes working with big pharma, they want to keep you away from the areas where they actually develop drugs. Right. Fun for reasons I, I understand, but it also makes it a little bit less interesting for me. <laughs> so, and you have to work around that. With a small and medium-sized uh, biotech, you can pitch ideas that um, might go into that pipeline eventually. And um, what sort of challenges or um, kind of the biggest problems that you're seeing at the <coughs> moment within the industry? So industry is a lot of different things. I yeah. mean, and, and it's also represented at, at this great conference. Uh, I mean, you have big pharma, they are facing some challenges. Uh, biotechs and uh, CROs and CMOs are facing other challenges. Um, so of course, big pharma has had um, cutbacks as a trend towards working more with biotech and have biotech style um, research, which gives a lot of opportunities. Um, in general, I think uh, the peptide field and the oligonucleotide fields are, are, are very strong. I come from a country with a long uh, history f for doing peptide and protein science and um, medicinal chemistry based on this. And, and, and this has been uh, very strong and very rewarding. Challenges uh, would be f peptide manufacturing, uh, how is it? How can you do it more cost effectively? Right. Uh, how can you make it more sustainable? There's no doubt that it has to be more sustained, has to be more more green, mm. but also the price has to come down. Um, and there are efforts uh, towards this. Um, but yeah, so there are chances at different uh, levels, um, but also great opportunities. Uh, CROs that are also biotechs. Um, chemical opportunities for uh, making conjugates. Um, peptide oligonucleotide conju conjugates, many different kinds of conjugates. Mm. So opportunities to make more complex molecules and address more uh, challenging targets. Um, so the, I think the future can hold a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of kind of challenges, but also opportunities there. Yes, yeah. Um, I wonder, just to finish, um, how you see um, the industry, whether that's oligo and peptide yeah. specific or more broadly the pharma industry, um, will look in, say, 10 years' time? Yeah, I wish I knew. <laughs> um, well, I mean, there will be uh, more players. Um, 
and, and it's actually a, it's a complex question because there's also a lot of there's science in it, but there's also what should I say political factors. Right. Um, so what price will countries be willing to pay for drugs? Um, and, and that would affect the uh, orphan drug uh, field. Um, uh, there's one drug on the market that's been rather very, very successful, but also mm. very, very expensive. Right. Uh, is this sustainable for countries to pay for? So, so one question would be uh, the price of drugs uh, and which countries can afford them. Um, and, and, and that's, that's political discussions, sociological discussions. Um, so, but I think overall, um, price will, will, will be a driver. Um, convenience of administration will be a driver. Um, but then, of course, how um, the world population uh, develops. Uh, we see uh, more lifestyle diseases in countries that used yeah. not to have them. And, and they will uh, want to have um, drugs like, uh, like, like are being had in countries with um, lifestyle diseases like the Western countries. Mm. Um, how will that change? And um, uh, s yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't give a very clear answer. <laughs> <laughs> there are very, a lot of challenges, and uh, some of them are very difficult yeah. and, and beyond, way beyond a purely scientific point of view, of course. No, I think we all want to have a crystal ball and be able to see yes. into the future. Yeah. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Well, fascinating stuff. Thank you very Good. much. Thank you very much.